Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Simple Biz 360 podcast. We are going to take a little road trip today, so we're going to depart from our regular programming, which if you're looking at the back uh, behind me here on the graphics, it, we're in the middle of a three business tips in five minutes series right now. We are in the throngs of an experience economy, so we try to help you understand it and embrace it and do business better uh, inside that experience economy. But today, we are going to go down to Australia, and we're going to tune in with uh, special guest Gordon Manzion. It's our second time uh, getting Gordon on the show, and he's going to talk a little bit about cultural assimilation, a little bit about what he misses uh, from the USA, and also a special segment on a creative passion that he's bringing to light in his 60s. How about that, huh? So stick around, and we'll have a great show with Gordon. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Simple Biz 360 podcast. We are so excited because we have a guest today coming to you from Australia, Gordon Manzione. Gordon, uh, say hello to everybody if you could. Hello, everybody out there in podcast land, Jeff. Good to see you again. <laughs> Sounds good. Good having you on the show again, Gordon. Yeah, it's been since uh, episode 43 in 2020. So That's way crazy. back in August of 2020 was the last time we got together. Wow. Yeah. It's, um... That's uh, almost like pre-COVID, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right, right, at, right there, at COVID, and it's right in the at the tail end of, uh, well, not the tail end, but right in the smack dab in the middle of it. Yeah, really. Yeah, gosh. And so, uh, yes, a lot, lot changed since then. You moved to a new uh, homestead, is that right? Yeah, we uh, we we sold. Uh, I say I sold the lawnmower and moved to a gated community. Oh, cool. And I would recommend it to anyone at uh, probably our our age, I suppose, you know, or fifty five. It's just the best move in the world. Awesome. You, you, you engage socially yeah. uh, with everyone. Everyone's in the same kind of boat. Uh, there's a lot to do. Big clubhouse. We yeah. even have a nine course, a nine uh, hole golf course nice. here. Nice. Nice. So you got a little R and R time there too on, on premise. That's awesome. Well, well, we're so excited to have you. And, and Gordon's coming to us from uh, New South Wales. Uh, it's about eight hours out of Melbourne. It's right uh, near Sydney, and uh, uh, we're real happy to have you here. We got a big time difference, but a real cool show. And, and folks, the the reason I asked Gordon to be on, you know, we've got a lot of in, uh, in common things. Uh, Gordon and I did a show uh, back in uh, 2020. Uh, Gordon works for Lead Sun, uh, which is a lighting company. Uh, pathway lighting specialist down in Australia, and we really had some fun doing some business stuff there, uh, and then uh, you know talking shop, and then we talked a little bit about we both went to the same high school, so we come from Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, which is uh, right not too far from uh, where Ma Bell used to be headquartered in Murray Hill, New Jersey, and we went to Governor Livingston High School, graduated the same class, and uh, we both have the affinity for rock and roll and sales and business and just. Uh, a lot of good stuff in common. So we wanted to have Gordon on and <laughs> kind of share with us everything Australia, everything USA, and everything storybook drummer. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, Gordon is, uh, he's moved down to a country. Um, you know, you've now lived in Australia more than you've lived in the United States, correct? I bet. I uh, was just looking at it, just doing the calculations now. I've been married 41 years, wow. and so I've been here 42 years, Jeff. Wow, 42 years. That's awesome. And I never never looked back. It's been the best move of my life. And uh, as mentioned, we talked about the idea of it was I picked the best country yeah. outside of the USA to move to. So I've been lucky. I've been struck. Uh, that's good. awesome. And you met your lovely wife. Uh, you, know, you met your lovely wife who was from there. Is that correct? She is. She's from Sydney as well. Yeah. And at the time, she was a hairdresser. I met her on the on the beach in Waikiki when I was out with Gary French, my high school, our high school buddy. Yeah. And um, next thing I know, I was I was swept. I was up. just love struck. I hit by a coconut. Uh, <laughs> say. It still hurts, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but the truth of the matter was is that uh, it changed my whole life. Oh, that's great. Well, that that is terrific, and certainly a big move like that. So you know, really, Gordon, there's a lot of people that that you know don't leave the confines of their own state. Sometimes they don't certainly uh, get to travel internationally like many of us have, and many of us ha you know um, uh, wish we had done. But I think it's so cool. A lot of people sit back and go, hey, my classmate or my neighbor or my associate moved to a different country. I wonder what it's like. I wonder what this is like. I wonder what that's like. So I thought we'd do a little show where we kind of ask yeah. you some questions and let you tell us what, what is it like? You know what I mean? 
Bring it on. Bring How's it that? On. You know, so, uh, so, uh, any rate, you know, I'm just dying to know, let's, let's focus on Australia first. Okay. What, what is the food that you've come to love the most down there? Uh, can you believe it? I love it. It's curry food because Australia is a multicultural yeah. place. Uh, Sydney as well, the largest city of Australia. Uh, there's every culture here and curries are everywhere. Really? And not just curries, but like Thai food and takeaway sure. Chinese. It was Chinese, then it became Thai, right? Yeah. And now it's just everything with curries. So no kidding. And, I, and I cook as well. So I do a lot of cooking curries. So it's just, it's probably the best food outside the typical, what they call the steak and the three veg, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which has been traditional Australian as so, well. But, so uh, it's, so it's, is, isn't curry a eclectic mix of stuff? Yeah. Well, isn't curry a spice? Uh, oh, everything is spicy, hot spice. Okay. Uh, sometimes you can make uh, non uh, coconut milk curries. So people are into milks or have a uh, wow. an intolerance to certain types of milks, coconut milks. You can actually make some really good non coconut based curries. Wow! <laughs> so curries are really the. It's not so much the spice; it's the food. It's the food, and it's mainly around the same staple, you know, proteins that we yep. all eat: yep. chicken, gotcha. fish, and, and beef. Gotcha. Interesting. So okay. Animals. So that's cool. So you know, a little bit. All right. So what are your favorite Australian phrases, or what's the one that that kind of tops the list for you? Well, you know, Australian phrases, uh, and that, that this has to do with a lot with the in, influx of a lot of other uh, cultures coming in. They're losing a lot of their, their original vernacular phrases, like a fair dinkum, which means uh, if you're a fair dinkum, you're right. You know, it's like, are you fair dinkum? Yeah, I'm fair dinkum. It's like, are you right? That's how that, that's wow. how that comes across. Interesting. And it's still used, but, but, but sparingly, I still like that phrase. Uh, I like a bloody oath, bloody oath. Everything's bloody oath, which means if you say something to me and I agree, I say bloody oath. Wow. Well, now, where's where's the origin of that? Do you know, or uh, there's a lot of originations from all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know the actual. Yeah. There, I know you can actually research it where this stuff comes from, um, but maybe maybe it could be goes back to the World Wars. Maybe yeah. a yeah. lot of that goes back to World War. Interesting uh, dialogue and conversations and things like that. Uh, but so, uh, you can look them up and it's uh, like any vernacular, even the yeah. American stuff. Uh, you can look at the history of why we say yeah. what we say sure. in these phrases. And it's very interesting reading. Absolutely. Yeah. So bloody O's, fair dinkum. Uh, anything else jump, uh, jump off the top well, of my True mind? blue is always that true blue mean that you're the truest and the, and most honest uh, thing going. So everything is just true blue. And, uh, um, but uh, I, if we don't hear a lot of it yeah. as much today, you know, it's, it's a sad way, but that's just yeah. the way it is because the new cultures don't pick it up. They don't understand it. It's just the old culture of Australian, original Australian people that, uh, that still understand it and, and say it. Uh, the word bastard is used a lot, but it has different levels of bastardy, bastardy, they call it. And so you can become an old bastard or a bloody bastard or, or <laughs> <laughs> and they, but they have different different meanings. Right, interesting. So some are really nice. Got levels, and complimentary, huh? and some things are you just don't say. Yeah, the the levels. Uh, yeah, we don't have. I don't think we have levels here. At least I've never known. But that's uh, funny. So it's so interesting stuff. So now the the origins yeah. of Australia tie back to England, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? And then. Yes, and so, but you do have a lot of Asian influence. You do have a lot of influx, I should say. And is there a fair amount, or is the Aboriginal, Aborigine of Australia, is that is that influence coming more into the culture as we speak? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a great respect for the Aboriginal culture. Yeah. And uh, it's every day you're picking up new ideas, new things that you haven't, you know, yeah. they teach you a lot of the, it's the oldest, basically, yeah. culture in the world. Yeah. That's yeah. The, it's it the is, right? Well. Uh, but well respected here. Uh, as well. Uh, they do have their issues, of course, like any indigenous sure. country has their indigenous people have their issues to overcome. But uh, certainly from my standpoint, I treat them with respect and, uh, and and understand the culture Interesting. and try to understand their beginnings and what they what they believe in. So it brings that kind of different level, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, interesting. But now, was that, I suppose, is a way to live and yeah. things. So it's been well, terrific, really. Well, that's good. And, and Gordon and I have had um, the opportunity to do some work together, too. Um, uh, we, did, we did a simple biz uh, workshop for his company. And your company is very respectful of the Aborigines, uh, for sure. I, do, I did pick that up, correct? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, you know, when I do, we do a lot of online presentations, team meetings, Microsoft team meetings. I do a lot of I do presentations virtually every, every day to a group of engineers, professionals, mainly to local government councils, state governments, and these yeah. type of people, professionals. And uh, we always give that oath, uh, that, that original oath of honor to the uh, 
dedication to the Aboriginal, the land of the people yes. who sit. So we give that respect. It's only a couple sentences, but we do pay that respect to them. Very nice. Every time. The very nice, and that was something, by the way, folks. We opened up our uh, workshop session with. So uh, it was it was an oath to the Aboriginal people, correct? It is, and we even have it as our part of our email signature too. You would notice that maybe. Nice. nice. So there's a lot of respect there for sure. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. We, so, we honor that. So how? Um, I mean, you know, I I I know this is a broad based question, but how do you describe the Australian people in your opinion? I mean, what, what? How would you, you know, just give us a feel for them? Well, you know, uh, the the uh, they're a lot, they're they're more laid back. I can't say they're a lot more laid back now today because of time and people yep. are are into you know getting to. <clears throat> things have changed a lot with that from that respect, but certainly they, 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 they don't have the, um, uh, the jumping over people's shoulders so much to get ahead on the ladder. Yeah. Uh, that competition is still there, but it's not as, I don't think it's as fierce as you might think in the United States as well. Uh, they have more of a relaxed uh, attitude to things. We have a, a saying here called a tall poppy syndrome. There you go for vernacular. Okay. Right. Tall poppy syndrome, uh, which is stuff. And I don't know where the originals of that was, but I'll find out now. <laughs> um, but it's about uh, about if you get your head too high, there's a way that they can bring you down pretty pretty quick. Interesting. Uh, and that means through the way they sure. approach you and they you know, slap you around a bit and try sure. to get you down to the level, right? Let's not go too high, right? Yeah. And uh, I think there's still a little bit of that still around, actually, Jeff, to be honest. So the, just, so, just to kind of de- uh, so I suppose the easiest thing is a little more laid back. I suppose yeah. that's the, the coin of the phrase here. Well, it's a nice way to depuff people, you know, just kind of, uh, you know, make sure that, yeah, you know, make sure they uh, get a little more humility than they have been uh, been showing, you know. And, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. that's that's cool. So, um, so when you think of, you know, when when I think of Australian people, I, I do, I get this feeling of very laid back. I mean, that's what I get. But progressive, and you know, very. Um, and I've come to know now through being in the business world that they're very good business people, and I've interacted with a number of them. I was just across. The, the aisle from a couple of them at a trade show uh, that, right. d- that do yeah. uh, challenge coins and, bo- and badges. And uh, yeah, they're very nice gentlemen, but you know, very, very business hungry. Yes. I mean, there's a hunger yes. for the sale and for the business entity there. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, from our own business lead son, I mean, yeah. uh, we're, we're very business hungry and uh, you know, we're at the top of the pecking order from our industry standpoint. What we do just basically yep. is we we're in the renewables industry, as you yep. know, Jeff, yep. and uh, we build a lot of what we call off-grid solar street lighting, yep. and that finds its way now into residential areas, uh, the pathways and all those areas, and, and car parks, passive areas as well. And we're doing a lot of that because it's cable free. You're not laying yep. cables anymore. So, so, uh, you know, we understand that. And, uh, yeah, so we're pretty competitive for sure. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, Australia is an Island, a big Island, um, a lot of geographic areas, a lot of ocean, obviously all the way around. What's your favorite geographic spot of, uh, and if you could describe it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a good question. 10,000 miles of coastline, right? So you can you can just close you your it. eyes right. and point your finger where you can, and you'll land in the most beautiful place in the world. Wow. I mean, we we're, we're lucky that way. Wow. Uh, we 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 have no borders with any country. So when you think about that, yeah, um, the closest country to us is Indonesia. Yeah, it's about ninety miles just north of uh, Darwin, and then of course to our east is New Zealand. It's about a two and a half hour plane ride. Right. But uh, we're just lucky. We've got coastlines. And I think that's my favorite place. Uh, anywhere from the far north coast of Queensland, which everyone is familiar with, the Great Barrier Reef, yep. which is Cairns and Port Douglas and those areas, right. is absolutely beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and you and Diane have uh, spent a lot of time, uh, obviously, in a lot of those spots, I would imagine. Uh, not a lot of time. I mean, uh, we're, we, we, we're lucky we have Sydney because Sydney has some yep. great beaches here so we get the best of both worlds in nice. fact if i got on my car right now i could be at a beach within uh, 25 minutes nice so a little closer than the jersey shore even wow how about that yeah 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 and i think it's probably because we're from new jersey yeah uh, you know and we grew up on the shore right or down the shore kind of thing uh it's always had that feeling so i've never it's it's always been part of my life so yeah it's been great yeah awesome well that's neat to, to be able to move to a place where you're that close and you've has, yeah. has that area always been your homestead general area of new new south wales yes yes gotcha. yes and mainly in Campbelltown, which is a uh quite a large uh local government uh, area 
uh, just southwest, about 50 miles southwest of, of, of Sydney, I suppose, Sydney proper, because yep. Sydney's about a 5 million, 5 million plus now. Yep. I think it's approaching 6 million people population. Wow. So it's a big city. That is big. Yeah. And Absolutely. you guys are going into your fall season right now, correct? It is. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. 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 So we're starting to get into it. We hit winter. We had some Arctic, uh, Antarctic, Antarctic, I should say, Antarctic, <laughs> Arctic, Antarctic uh, winds come up and it was absolutely blowing last night. It was cold. Was it really? Oh, well, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't get snow in Sydney, though. We don't well, get snow. Just, just the winter. But we'll get down to uh, uh, in the old, uh, I suppose, Fahrenheit, it might get down to 30, 33, 34, 35. Wow. Wow, with the wind chill even, mm-hmm. yeah, even even colder with the wind chill or not? I'll call wind chill for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Okay, yeah. so so yeah. Uh, how how uh, how would you just kind of uh, looking at Australia and American cultures? How would you what what's the biggest difference you've noticed in the people in Australia versus just the the people in the United States? I mean, is there a difference? No, no, not really. I, I, nothing really comes to mind, really. Uh, the, the Australians have a great affinity towards Americans, and I think that goes back again to the, uh, the early wars, World War I. There's always been that uh, love for uh, Americans. Of course, they grew up with American shows and yeah. TVs, um, just the way it, yeah. the way it is. So there's not much difference, yeah. really. In that, from that regard, yeah, and everything's up to speed now. But, but take you know, I, I just I went yeah. to Argentina in 1985. My wife's from there, and in 1985, you know, they were watching TV shows that were maybe four to six years older. You know, we had seen them four to six years before. They're right. talking about albums. Oh wow, you know, did you see this new you know album? I'm like, wow, that thing came out. You know, f- five years ago. And I would imagine there, when you first got down to Australia, there's a little bit of that lag. But of course, everything's real time now. Was there a lag like that? When did you notice with with music uh, there, and? <clears throat> Jeep, Jeff goes back a long time now. I think there was a lag. Uh, there might have been a lag, but I certainly don't, don't notice it. Uh, I was only thinking when you were just speaking, uh, my wife is watching her probably her 10th uh, reruns of The Golden Girls. I mean, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, interesting. Yeah. You know, in Grey's Anatomy, she hasn't, I think she's seen that about four times already, you know, over again. So, you know, and, and my children, I have three children. And again, it's uh, it's just grown up with yeah. all the American shows. And uh, and so that's that liking. It's that really cool liking uh, yeah. for American culture. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's interesting. I, I, we just, uh, we, we, you know, don't, we, we, we forget that we weren't real time as a world n- not too long ago. So I just thought I'd ask the question, but yeah, very cool. So, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's just, uh, what, what's the music down there now? You're, you're a rocker. So the music down there, what would you consider? I mean, there's a lot of heavy rock that comes out of your area for sure, but what do you, what, what, What's the music all, scene like? All times. I mean, my my Spotify playlist has a complete. I have. A, I've created so many different playlists. You know? Nice. And uh, sometimes you can't tell the difference between the two groups, between the Americans, uh, even the yeah. British. Of course, the over yeah. you know, the over the invasion of the British as well. Big influence of the British bands here, yeah. of course, and the yeah. Australian brands as well. Like I was only looking at Met at Work and looking at some of their stuff. Sure. And ACDC, of course. Sure. Because, but uh, but uh, it's a whole mixture of stuff. So they have this music culture, and again, a lot of it is American music sure. and British music as well. So there's those three influences are huge, so, absolutely yeah, between yeah. the three countries, absolutely. And it kind of marries together. I mean, there's real, there's, you, you know, you, you probably have your pockets of island music and, you know, soft rock and, you know, pop rock and the whole thing, right? We do. We have the whole gambit of stuff as well. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, so, the gospel music too is yeah. you know, going well. And of course the indie music is, yeah. is big here. Indie music, which yeah. is interesting kind of. Yeah, is, there, is that is that Aboriginal in influence no. at all? Or not? It's, uh, indie is made, it, it, well, it sounds like it is, but it's it's it is more indigenous kind of things from different cultures, and they play different different things that happen, different sounds and different yeah. songs. And uh, but it's a nice mix of stuff that comes through, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's cool. great, good stuff, good cool. music coming out of it. Actually, good, good. Well, so 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 you know, you've been in Australia much more than you've. Uh, spent time in the United States, uh, but w- let's yeah. go. Let's let's uh, kind of reel you back into the USA, and I'm just dying to know, like, what is the food you're missing or hankering for? You know, from the USA. 
that you can't get that well then. <laughs> Again, you can't, you get, Jeff, you get everything you want here, right? Really? But uh, when, <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? You know, the American barbecue, you know, the, Amer- the Australian barbecue is steak, you know, throw right. meat, sure. you know, sure. or a piece of shrimp on the barbie, right? Sure. But I do miss the American smell of a good hamburger yeah. and a hot dog. I mean, there's it, it, if you're having one this weekend, yeah. please think of me. I will. I will. Mother's Day, <laughs> sure. Because that smell. I mean, there's something about that that particular, you know, uh, family activity, I suppose, that, yeah. uh, that's, uh, that I do miss. That's interesting, you know? Interesting. So burgers, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure they have burgers down there, but it's just not one, oh, of yeah. the, it's not one of the regular rotational foods that come out. Not really. No, yeah. no. No, if I if I was say we're coming off for a Barbie, right? Yeah. There'd be no hamburgers. Well, it's very interesting. <laughs> and see, that's what <laughs> that's what you would get here is like, where are the burgers? You know, what happened to them? You know what I mean? So uh so very cool. So what do you I mean, what do you miss? I mean, when you bottle it all up, what do you miss most of the from the USA? I think my family and friends. Sure. Um, and again, when I first came out here in eighty one, there was no social medias. Yeah. There was no connection like we're doing sure. now. It's just sure. a whole different world. So over the years, I, I tend to become, uh, I wasn't ever lonely, but I certainly became less lonely because they able to be able to interact like this. But I think that that touch, that feel, getting together with friends and, and high school friends and just going to some reunions and meeting up at uh, some of the gin mills. And, sure. and, and uh, that kind of, I do miss that. Yeah. Well, I do miss that, yeah. Well, you're a very social person growing up and you that, that part mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, you disconnect from a lot of people. Thank goodness for social media, a lot of you know, and things like Facebook, where you can at least keep in touch, right? And uh, that which is helpful. Well, you know, I remember in high school, I was voted uh, MVP, most valuable partier, and yeah. uh, I thought. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you definitely went to them, right? Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. But, but but we had a great yeah. selection of friends, as you know, and sure. that was, so I, I do, I do miss that friendship. Good. Well, yeah, I'm sure they miss you too. And yeah, so very cool. So uh, what, what American phrases did you kind of copy and paste, click and drag down to Australia and introduce your friends in Australia to? Any well, of you them? Know, right? You know, you know, you right? What's that? You get that over there? Like, you okay? Are you kidding me? Oh, okay. You kidding me? So over here, well, when I started saying, are you kidding me? They took it as an offense. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. No shit, right? Um, oops. Um, uh, yeah, and, wow. and, I, and it took me a while to get over that because I'm saying, no, no, I mean, yeah. I mean I'm mean, i saying, uh, yeah, right, I agree, like. You know, yeah, yeah, sure, totally I well. totally get it. <laughs> like I explain myself on this simple little short sentence of phrases. So do they pick, do they assimilate and pick it up, or did, do you just kind of start to not use it anymore as time goes on? Oh, I stopped using yeah, it. Yeah, right. Sure. It just doesn't fit. Yeah. It's like, because I spent me to three minutes trying to explain it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Every time you use it. Right. It's like, <laughs> it's oh my okay. gosh. Yeah. It's okay. You know, that, I agree with you. Yeah. That's wild. Oh my gosh. So, so what, uh, you know, when you, when you, when you think about, you know, Jersey and where you're from and, and you think about the East coast and I mean, what's the geographic spot that you miss most from you know, your time in the U.S. You know, I, I got to say, I'm a very proud New Jerseyan. Um, and I always have been. I always carried that on my sleeve wherever I go. Yep. Oh, it's just it's just, it's just, just innate in us, maybe, yep. perhaps. Yep. Uh, so I do miss New Jersey as a state. I miss the beaches. I just need that freedom of going to the beaches. Of course, uh, when we were growing up in the high school, we were big on the Wildwood scene. Yep. We just happened to go down really far down. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was cool. But uh, you name you name the beach, and I, I've been there. And yeah. uh, I do miss that, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Well, it is, it is you know, people, I think it, it got a bad rap with the Jersey Shore show and everything. But if you're, if you're from New Jersey and you realize what it is, it's 120 miles of yeah, pristine beach. I mean, really great yeah. sand, and it kind of breaks up weird. You know, you've got south. You know, if you t- to take a Garden State Parkway for those who are kind of trying to visualize this, Garden State Parkway runs north and south. And if you really, you know, from what I found, because I lived in Long Beach Island for three summers, and I lived on Brigantine Island for three for five summers. So you're talking about locations that are below Seaside Heights, which is eight exit eighty two or thereabouts. Mm-hmm. So you've really got New Yorkers and New Jerseyans you know, congregating up to exit 82, you right. find more Philly people in between yes. that, you know, yes. s- you know that yes. Long Beach Island and, and a certainly uh, Sea Isle City, which is down on 17. And then you see a lot of Canadians come into yes. Wildwood 
to, yes. especially towards the end of the summer. So it's really an interesting mix, but a lot of Philly, a lot of Pennsylvania from 60, exit 63 south on the Garden State Parkway, for sure. Definitely. You know, I was just thinking yeah. when you said the French, uh, French Canadians coming down. Yeah. Uh, I, I can remember seeing meeting a whole bunch of them when I was down in Wawa for sure. So you're spot on there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, it's, a, it's an interesting mix of, uh, of where the two, the two, the two waters don't yeah. meet. It's just that Philadelphia yeah. connection at that bottom section. Yeah. Is just phenomenal. But then again, it's only, what's it like a 40 minute drive for them or something, is it? I mean, it doesn't take them that long to get across the New Jersey uh, with. Yeah, know, a buck there. Atlantic City Expressway. Yeah. So, yeah. So what's interesting is, you know, I went to college down off exit 44 uh, off the parkway, went, went to Stockton. So, you know, I spent most of my time in that Philly market outside of, outside of, you know, where we lived in the, in the New York Metro area. I mean, when I think about it, 32 years in, in Jersey, I'm, I'm the same way you are. I wear Jersey with a ba- as a badge of honor, but I only spent five years in Berkeley Heights. I spent, you know, I lived 32 years out, you know, or 27 years elsewhere. And, yeah. uh, I was in Allendale for a while. I was in Hillsboro, I was in Brigantine. I was in Sicklerville, you know, so I wow. kind of got a yeah. taste, but but Jersey is a beautiful state. It, it, it unfortunately gets a bad rap in some cases, but uh, it's a great place uh, for sure. No question about it. There you go. Yeah, I love it. Love but it. Uh, so so any so Wildwood is uh, is your favorite shore spot. So um, what do you uh, music wise? I mean, we're going to segue into music here because this is definitely a cool passion of yours. But what what? Yeah. Um, when you went down to Australia, what band did you put in your hip pocket and say, this is my, this is my Americana stamp right here? Yeah, well, it's interesting. Uh, you mentioned that uh, there's, a, there's a, a great uh, group called Australian Crawl. And uh, I'll mention them in a minute as well again. So they were in there as well. Uh, Mental as Anything was another one. Okay. Uh, these are probably foreign to a lot of people, uh, but uh, but their music you might you might understand and hear it if you heard it. You say yeah. I heard that tune before. ACDC, sure. of sure. course. Uh, Air Supply was big when I first got here. Huge. Uh, Men at Work. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Who can it be now? And I I'm playing a bit of that on the drum as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's interesting. Kind yeah. Of yeah. Song. I, you know who can be? Yeah. So what what big, what um, American? Of course, uh, when MTV came out, yeah. uh, that that changed all the landscape of music. Yeah, you know, for sure. And that's why I started to visualize a lot more of the music in my mind. When MTV, it just changed, it changed everything. Absolutely changed everything. Yeah, gave the it gave every as you know, it gave every song yeah. some kind of meaning from a maybe from a different angle. You we didn't realize, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, a lot of times we didn't. Perspective, yeah, you know, we didn't wow, dissect the words that, that much. Way, you know? Yeah. yeah, we didn't dissect the words, and MTV l- allowed us to see the connectivity visually to some of the the words. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, but it's but coming here and, and listening to the Australian music was just absolutely fantastic. You know, it was just blew me away. Absolutely. Did, what uh, what bands did you turn your Australian friends onto from the states? What were your favorite? I didn't I didn't have to because they were telling me what they liked. Yeah. You know, and it, it goes again from across the pond again. Sure. It was all the basic stuff with Led Zeppelin, of course, and the Stones and Deep Purple and Moody Blues and yeah, things sure. like that, you know, and sure. uh, that I always loved and always had a great affinity to all those bands. And, uh, and of course, um, uh, just about everything. So it didn't, it didn't yeah. take much of saying, look, at what do you think of this? They got the, yeah. they had the CDs or yeah. the tapes, you know, so yeah. let's listen to this. Yeah. Oh yeah, for it's sure. Cool. So, so let's, uh, uh, pizza. I'm, I'm fascinated with your take on pizza. So are you able to find East coast type pizza down there? Cause I mean, my wife and I are missing that out here in St. Louis for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's a, we have a heavy Italian base here as well. And, uh, so we have, uh, all kinds of pizzas basically. Uh, and most of the restaurants you go into now, in fact, we just went to one last weekend and they had, they must've had, uh, maybe 20 types of pizzas on the menu, well, you know, from the margaritas yeah. right yeah. up to the, the yeah. full bore. Yeah. Everything you can imagine, including pineapple. That, Sorry, but yeah, I know. That, yeah. I don't really like pineapple I can't, I pizza, can't, but <laughs> I can't do that. I mean, is this de Mayo's type of pizza, my friend? Is this de Mayo's type of pizza? Well, I mean, there you go. Now, that's a blast from the past. Yeah, right? I mean, but that's yeah, the yeah. pizza we miss. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, de Mayo's yeah. pizza. Well, you know what? That brings back great memories, too, you know? But my yeah. favorite there, just to digress slightly, was the calzone. Yeah, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Yeah, and a night where you were a little, uh, you know, loop de loop, you know, a calzone oh, yeah. tasted good. We were well you know? fed when we got home. Yeah. That's for sure. 
Yeah, that was right. So my wife and I had to go up to Whippany Park uh, not too long ago. And, oh, yeah. you know, we were up there and her father was in a facility up there. And we just said, hey, we yeah. want to go out to eat pizza. Where can we go? Oh, here you go. Here you go. There, turn there. And you, boom, there's Johnny's. And so, you know, we pull up to Johnny's Pizzeria and Paulie G's Deli's right next door. And we're like, yes, this is what we miss. You know And I mean? The pizza was like you could have you could have stuffed 18 slices in your suitcase and taken it. Oh, it's great. You know, so, I mean. We have we miss that, yeah, for sure. Well, you're, you remember uh, you remember Mary's Pizza? Yes, correct. Right? That was on uh, Plainfield Avenue correct. near the old uh, Berkeley Swim Club. Yes, everyone remembers Mary's Pizza yes. from, New, from Berkeley Heights. Yes, I mean it was just basically a uh, margarita, basically a simple right. pizza with uh, whatever she put on it, rosemary or thyme, whatever it was. It just brought you in for miles. Simple pizza. There was no nonsense with Mary. And it was just beautiful. Right. Where DeMeo's was. Cents a slice. Yeah, 15 cents. Remember those days? Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, t- take me back to college where you used to go in and get a, you know, a beer for set, for 25 cents and then get a, get a turkey sandwich or carving off the turkey, you know, for a buck and you're getting a, a yes. turkey sandwich and you know, can't beat that, but well, very yeah. cool. Well, me hungry. yeah, I know me too. Well, well, listen, this segment is really special to me because it's something, you know, we're, I think one of the connections we have, folks, and I hope you're not getting, you know, bored by this because I, I, I'm having fun asking Gordon these questions. But, you know, one of the things that we both have an affinity for is we're creative people. And that's what I've come to notice about you. And you've taken your creativity and you've done something with it that not um, I haven't seen anybody do before. I just haven't. I mean, plenty of guys do what I do, create podcasts and go out there and do it. But you've taken your love for um, a, uh, you know, musicality that you developed in high school and you've put stories to it and you've put it on film and you've made... Uh, and every story is getting better and better and better. And I'm talking about the storybook drummer. And uh, just real quick, folks, just before we let Gordon tell you about it, take a take a quick look here at uh, in this five second clip of what storybook drumming uh, looks like. I really tried, Father. Very cool. So there's more to that. Uh, we can certainly direct you uh, to to that website, and we will at the end of this. But Gordon, tell us about storybook drumming. Where, where, where did this idea come from? And what is it? Yeah, where did it come from? Um, again, it's uh, it, it was visualizing, I suppose, music. And then I uh, uh, I played the drums uh, when I was in high school. Had them downstairs in the basement, and uh, and I just banged away, as you know. And then when I moved, that was the drums were gone. And so about five years ago. Um, I bought a very cheap drum set online. It's just, just like playing something and sure. just bought, put $200 and so I'll start banging away again and feeling, you know, trying to sure. get my motion back. And that's how that started. And then I thought, this is interesting. Okay, well, I can play, I, I can hold a beat at least. And I love all drummers. Yeah. I don't care what kind of drummer you are. I love you anyway. I just love the fact that someone has two hands or even one hand and can just get up there and just bang away. Yeah. But uh, but I just got to start thinking about, you know, and then all of a sudden I thought, you know what, I'd like to be able to do a bit more with this, this thing. So I started recording myself. And thinking, uh, I can do a bit more with this. And I started to think of visualize it. So I took these songs and started making some visualization of how I interpreted the music, not necessarily what the songwriter did, it's how I interpreted that music. And that's how that started, Jeff. Interesting. So I mean, so you uh, did not play drums for many, many years? Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, I, I, I left them at 18 and picked them up when I was 60 or something. Wow. I did not know that. I thought you kind of took, you know, I thought somewhere along the line, you got drums and you were banging away down there, but you didn't start till five years ago. Yeah. A restart. No, it's just with life gets away from you, you know, wow. and you're busy working and traveling. And, uh, but I wanted, I wanted some outlet of stuff to do. And I wanted to keep my, you know, my arms moving and everything yeah. else moving. That slows down as you get older. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I always had a natural kind of ability just to, just to hold a note and a beat, you know, and uh, so I made some improvements along the way, and I self-taught, took a couple of lessons, uh, got some of the basic rudiments, rudimentary, rudiments right, and uh, and some of the some of the guys that gave me some ideas to to, to stick to, uh, and I stuck with them. But uh, uh, so with the recording side, I just wanted to do something a bit more, and uh, so I started throwing them up on Facebook, and um, and uh, and just just my Facebook friends and family and just, just to, just do that. So I don't monetize them at all. Right. Right. They're not monetized in any way. And I don't intend, tend to do that. 
Right. But um, certainly have a lot of fun. I, I think I think from I learned how to use some of the software, as you can see. I'm, yes. So a lot of it is is yes. is is the acting and getting actors and and becoming part of that whole that whole yeah. show. It's a show, really, yeah. in a way. Storybook. It's a storybook show, uh, and just doing it from there. And uh, yeah, hopefully it comes out on the other end that people say, yeah, I kind of like that. They certainly know the music. They're very familiar sure. with the music. Um, but the interpretation and the creativity side uh, past that. So it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the embedding and it's the software and throwing different types of arrangements in and, 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 and videos and images yes. into, the, into the mix. That's, that's, I'm enjoying that mostly. Yeah. Well, the creativity is getting, you know, I mean, obviously getting be- the production's getting better and better every time, as, as I've mentioned. And it's really getting interesting in that you're getting more sophisticated. And, and folks, what, 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 you know, Gordon's really doing is layering in a, a thematic story and intertwining it with, you know, his, his drumming. So you drum to a popular rock song that's, that, that helps you tell the story. You bring mm-hmm. in other audio visual, you know, mixes, mm-hmm. sometimes it. just visual, but, you know, some of it's your own, some of it's stock footage. And then you do bring in a cascade of, you know, on every episode, a couple, uh, you know, you'll see a couple actors, you know, pop up, including yourself. So it's really, um, but the stories, tell us about, where, you know, where, where, where are the stories coming from? Um, are they personal to you? Or are they things that, you know, where are they stemming from? That's a good question. And I don't know uh, exactly where they come from. They, they seem to all of a sudden, they just seem to click. Uh, I do have a lineup of songs that I do want to do. I do want to produce. And uh, from the, I call myself G-Man. That's my, that's my, how my name, uh, Alex. And uh, so, but there are stuff, but, but things that do um, uh, really hit home is the one I just did recently uh, was Elephant in the Room, yeah. which is, uh, which is the Phil Collins classic, uh, Genesis classic, No, No Son of Mine. And so I, I, I just labeled it yeah. the elephant in the room. And, um, and the idea there was uh, that there's a lot of, uh, you know, father and son issues out there. And some sons don't talk to their fathers and some fathers don't talk to the sons ever, right? Ever. Right. And, uh, but I'm so I, I interpret that song that right. way. And as you, that's the result, the right. elephant in the room, you can see that on, on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, me personally, I was very close with my father. Yeah. So yeah. it never came from a personal angle, yeah. but I felt the pain of others. I sure. think that's probably the best sure. way to do it. I know there's pain out there. And I said, there's gotta be pain out there. That I might be able to just to just bring it out, you know, and just maybe just make some production out of this as well. So it doesn't have to be personal at all. In fact, a lot of times it's not, yeah. not yeah. personal at all. Um, the two tickets to paradise uh, with Eddie money. Great song, which I, which the book is actually, I just named label the, the storybook as Two Tickets to Heaven, it was just basically a celebration of my wife's uh, and I's trip up to uh, up to the Great Barrier Reef for her, our Ruby wedding anniversary last year. And I uh, just embedded a lot of stuff we did there and had a bit of fun with it. I had a lot of fun doing it, I got to tell you. Yeah. Uh, and that was a personal, personal yeah. one, but it was in my mind to do it for, for years. I just never ever got around to it. So, yeah. so it's a- it comes from all different ways. And then just recently, I'm listening to music uh, through whatever medium, Spotify, and I hear a song I haven't heard in ages, and it really hits you hard. Sure. <clears throat> One song I do want to do is uh, the Wallflowers, uh, you know, Love is a Country. So if you're a Wallflower fan out there, if you ever listen to Love, uh, you know, Love is a Country, it's a great song. Yeah. It's got great meaning to it. So perhaps I might do something there. I don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, interesting. So, you know, well, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of creative writers, mu- musicians, you know, they write to 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 subject matters that resonate with their audiences and resonate with people in general, and then some are personal, and you know you've got a mix of two. And the, and the clip we showed you folks there is from the elephant in the room. That's where that clip is from. But uh, you know, I mean, and that's yeah. I, I noticed your first couple seem to be uh, very you know uh, personal in nature, and then I've noticed yeah that you know you've got some of these others that are just helping other people put things in perspective or seeing it from a but but your Creativity is what I've really, you know, putting together a podcast like this, believe it or not, is a, a creative experience for me. It's fun. Just like you said, yours is fun. It really is. You Has know, be fun. taking a, a show idea, I'm running and a show idea comes to my mind and, you know, I research a little bit of it and I put it together and it map it out and it's a creative process. You know, you're putting something together that's got a poetic storytelling flavor to it 
but you're doing it through a, a bunch of mixed mediums together. And I just think it's uh, – I just hope you keep going. I hope – I can't wait to see them. I, they're getting better and better. And, you know, yeah. I want to turn people on to them. So uh, wh- where can they find them on YouTube? What's the handle on YouTube, if you don't mind me asking? That's okay. So it's G-Man, G-Man, uh, one word, storybook drummer, and that's it. And uh, there's there's some up there. Some go back five years. Some are yep. very, very rudimentary and basic. Uh, but as you can see the progression along, I did one by Uriah Heap called Stealing. Yeah. Uh, and it's a really yeah. bad oh. song. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a horrible song. Yeah. But but I am I, I created it in a way where I try to make some sense out of the song. Yeah. And uh, and the other one was Love Hurts by Nazareth. Uh, you know, it's a really deep, these are really deep, sad songs. And I try to do something, something right. there with right. it. The last one I just did, and I won't hold you up, uh, was uh, the Cat Stevens, Where Do the Children yeah. Play? Yeah. Now, that is a personal one. So if anyone's yeah. interested in seeing something personal. So I, I started off with, with showing my Ukrainian background, my Ukrainian family. And I got Ukrainian uh, clips uh, and images sent to me from my Ukrainian family in America that I haven't seen for ages. My grandmothers, my aunties, and I put it all together. Yeah. And then after, and then it pretty much just meant meld into where did the children play? And I called it, where did the children pray? Right. Because the irony of this song today with the Ukrainian flavor was here I'm playing in the playground with my granddaughter here, Scarlett, and we're having freedom and there's no bombs, but Scarlett's same age or same look, the same age girl is running away yeah. from a, from a catastrophe. You know, and so I'm thinking like yep. it's a it's a crazy world out here. You know, one girl's got the freedom and one girl is just screaming for her life. And so I tried to encapsulate that in this video. So yeah, well, I, and very, very tastefully done. And I mean, guys, I mean, really, and, and I know a lot of, you know, your high school classmates, our high school classmates and t- t- people from our town are, are, are watching it. And we'll post yeah. uh, we'll post yeah. this on that uh, on that Facebook site as well. And and certainly uh, give everybody an opportunity to connect with G-Man story, uh, storybook, uh, storybook drummer telling, you know, it's great. Uh-huh. So what's so, so, um, yeah, no, no problem. Now, were you getting any issues with the, um, licensing? I mean, with the music itself, I mean, are you running into any blockades? <clears throat> there, there are some, some ones I can't put up. Uh, Led Zeppelin is one, uh, I've done a couple of them and they're still in the archives. I can share them with you in personally, but I can't throw yeah. them up on a public base like YouTube or Facebook. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did one, uh, many, many years ago, uh, Desperado by the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, and it was all about my best friend, as you know, Jimmy Casca, right? right? This, people right. don't know Jimmy Casca. He was my high school best friend. And um, he had some issues. Jimmy did, had issues all his life. And sadly, he was uh, he died in a house fire back in 2009, I think it was. Right. And so <clears throat> it made me think, and I did something with Jimmy uh, about our old days at the Idle Hour uh, <laughs> in Gillette, New Jersey. And everyone knows sure. Gillette, New Jersey, sure. Idle Hour has ever been there. Sure. It's a raw, pretty raw. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, yeah. And so, uh, but well, I, I stole, I told the story. Yeah. It was a true story about us sitting around playing pool, just sitting at the, you know, and drinking a couple of beers and, and a desperado came through. Now I put that up on Facebook and I had a lot of views because I sent it to the high school and all my friends and they must have shared it. And there was a lot of views going there. And after two days, they shut it down. Yeah. So that was yeah. just the way it works. And today they're really hard on it. That's just the way it is. I understand it. Yep. There's copyright issues. I get it. So yep. yeah, you got to be mindful of that. As yeah, well. you do. Well, interesting stuff, guys, you will love yeah. it. And you know, I, I, I will just tell you and encourage anybody, you know, here's two, here's two guys here that we're in our, uh, we're in our mid sixties and you know what? <laughs> Uh, getting creative after age 60 has been, uh, it's been a really cool process. I know you feel that way. I felt that way as well, or I do feel that way as well. So anybody out there who's like, man, did I want to start a podcast? Did I want to write a book? Do I want to do something like this? Go ahead, jump, jump off the ledge, do it. You know, I say, do it, try it. You'll enjoy, you'll, you'll be, um, really, and I think you probably feel the same way. You'll be really satisfied with just meeting that creative um, itch, you know, just scratching that creative itch and getting it done, right? Isn't it fun? It is fun. And, you know, I, 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 I work a full week, uh, full time still, and it is a, uh, a completely different world for me. Yeah. So it, 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 it's escapism as well yeah. because I have three loves is really my family. 
my work and my, in my, I suppose you call it my craft, I suppose my drumming and my videoing. And uh, so I have a good balance there and uh, I try to balance them out yeah. just right. And I think a balance, I think everyone sh- that even has an inkling, everyone should play a musical instrument. And even if it's the voice, right? Because the voice is the first instrument, right? And and the drum is the second instrument, right? You know, basically. And uh, and uh, uh, anyone that, from a drumming standpoint, uh, even if you're if your children and your listeners obviously would have children, and you see them tapping, you know, right. don't yeah. don't stop them. You know, yeah. get them a drum yeah. kit yeah. or get them something, get them some silencer or pads, yeah. uh, electronic drum drum kits, which I now have yeah. and I use, as you know, because I can record yeah. through that. No one can hear me play. I mean, I had the acoustic set in the garage. When I, before I moved three years ago and I had eggs thrown at the house and, you know, you know, stuff jumped into the pool and all this stuff shut up and nasty letters in the mailbox. I get it. I understand it. It's loud stuff. No. But now it's a different world. I live in a retired, uh, you know, livestock yeah. community and it's got to be quiet, you know, yeah. and I can yeah. play all day long and all you hear is... Yeah, that's awesome. That's all you hear. That isn't that pretty. You know, technology has electronic to... drum. Everyone get electronic drum. Yeah. Get how small it is, just get it. Yeah. And, play. and even if you want to do it for exercise, because exercising your arms, as you know, yeah. we don't. We sure. walking all that. We never use our arms, and they say you use your arms more. Swimmers, you know, sure. Use your arms and go go for leather. I say. Yeah. Could you? Could you? Well, you know, that's so cool that yeah, technology has um, has made it appropriate and made it available for you to do this. Now, Matt, remember the days when you used to walk down the street. And you would hear a garage band in the '60s, like you'd hear yeah. it in the distance, and a bunch yeah. of guys banging, people banging away, you know, in the garage, literally, and the sound would just, you know, leak out into the neighborhoods. And it was, could you imagine living next door to that or in that house? You know, well, that's I did. Yeah. That's how I started. Yeah, right, uh, Johnny Piccarello, who was yeah. a couple years ahead of us. You know, everyone yeah. knows Johnny. Yeah, in that Johnny Piccarello, he was a quarterback for yeah. um, Highlanders. Yeah. Uh, he played the drums, you know, and uh, and uh, he was he was good. He was good. All I heard was bum 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 bum. I said, "This is uh, my head's going bang and bang and bang," you know. And uh, I loved it. Never worried me, you know. Interesting. And he didn't have a basement. <laughs> he did not. No. Did, you know, now so, did he? Did he so live? That's cl- how that started. Yeah. Did he live right on your street? He lived next door to me. He did. So he lived. So how far away did the Fulchers live from you? How many doors down? Oh, they lived uh, four houses up. Okay. So Bird Dog, you know, St- Steve, Bur- I got to be yeah. buddies with Bird Dog, yeah. Mad Dog later on, and, and, you know, and I guess when I was 18, 19. And anyway, he turned me on to Southside Johnny and the Jukes. So he was yeah, a big yeah. Juke fan. So we went all over the place watching Southside Johnny. And I mean, you know, that whole E Street sound just yes. captivated all, all of us, a lot of us back then. But it was oh, a great yeah. sound. And that was a, yes. and Southside that took that cool. sound with them. In fact, I yeah. think Bon Jovi used to be in his warm-up uh, band. He used to Bon Jovi used to be with the uh, Atlantic City Expressways. I think was okay. the one right, of his. But right. they used to play before Southside, and I think he gives Southside a lot of credit for his success too. Right. Oh, so you, you know, but That's interesting, it. interesting stuff. But um, well, uh, you know, it's so cool that you've been able to share all this with us, and I really encourage folks, especially from our neck of the woods, to to visit um, to to visit Gordon's YouTube site, and you know. What we end with every show here, Gordon, um, on the Simple Biz 360 podcast is we end with just highlighting a rock and roll lost in the shuffle tune. You know, it it might be a a popular number one tune. It might be a lost in the shuffle, truly. uh, But we like to to highlight it and we actually show it. It's up in the upper right hand corner of our YouTube experience. It's a little card. So at the end of the show, when, when Gordon says the name of the band and the song, you'll see it up there in a little card and you can actually click on it and it'll take you to the YouTube video. This is the way we bypass, you know, having to pay royalties and rights on actually, you know, playing the music. We don't, of we, course. Don't we don't do that. So <clears throat> yeah, that's no, a good idea. But um, good. we've it. had so many cool bands. We've had a band from Berkeley Heights or on uh, featured on here before. And before I ask you for your pick, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm, I've made it a mini mission to find out if Bob Dylan did in fact write Mr. Tambourine Man <laughs> in Berkeley Heights. <laughs> yes, we've heard rumors that he wrote Mr. Tambourine Man in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey. Right. We've heard that vicious rumor. And, uh, you know, I go to Duluth once in a while. His family's from Duluth. I don't know if I'll ever connect with him. I don't know if I'll ever get to talk to him. But if I do, I want to find out, did you write that tune in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey? That's amazing. I know what you're referring to. And yes, it's true. Apparently, Briarwood uh, Drive West. Right. Right. He wrote it in a garage uh, at the the producer's place, apparently. 
And right. I did read the, uh, the, the 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 book about the middle class, yeah. the new, new Brooklyn yeah. Heights band. Yeah. So I get it and uh, yeah. read that through. And I said, yep, 110%. Yeah, I, I still like to verify that. But yeah, I mean, isn't that cool? Though? So uh, that's a great book. And uh, and again, I'm gonna, I try to have Kathy on here one of these days. And hopefully I'll get her on here and let her tell her story about the middle class. Hey, hey, Jeff, so, I got one thing to say to that. Yeah. Uh, is that I think if Bob Dylan was walking down Briarwood Drive West, yeah. I could swear that I think I saw him walking to Dairy Queen. <laughs> what was he getting? To, was that before no, no, Brazier Burger or what? Look, it looked like him. It must have been him. It was uh, him. Oh my gosh. Going, uh, you oh, know, Misty, who, Misty. There you go. I mean, th- th- so funny. But, you know, if, if Bob Dylan folks did write this song there, it's right around the block from where Gordon grew up. So, uh, so that's pretty fun. So, anyway, Gordon, yeah, well, with uh, what is your Lost in the Shuffle? Uh, pick for today. Well, that was a challenge, you know. It's a it's a ta- challenge, but I want to make it as simple as I can. Can I leave you with an Australian one? Sure. All right. Now this is, has some interest. Now what I'll do is I'll just I'll just name the song. Okay. It's called Unpublished Critics. Okay. Okay. It's by Australian Crawl, who I mentioned previously. Right. right. Now the thing about this song is that it was. I wrote this down. It was it was written in 1981, and I like the listeners to listen to the song, and then listen to "Sweet Child of Mine," "Oh Mine," oh, yeah. by Guns N' Roses. Now, they say that "Sweet Child of Mine" was a complete takeoff and stolen from the melodies and the of the of the song of the Australian Crawl that they recorded uh, about six years earlier but the word was that they didn't have the money or the power to take on the giants of guns and roses to fight it and i like to think the listeners to listen to the melodies listen to the notes and you decide challenge accepted thank you so much so we will look forward to listening to that and uh, making that uh, voting on that ourselves so uh well very cool well uh listen we have thoroughly enjoyed it. it's been great uh, connecting with you again. I, I certainly uh, hope you and your family uh, have a wonderful year uh, and congratulations on your son's recent uh, wedding as well. So thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank so, you. And um, thank you for all that you're offering too. It's 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 fantastic. As you know, I'm a great avid follower of your work. Keep up the good work, and again, keep keep it going. Appreciate never it. stop. Appreciate it. Just well, you know what? And, yeah. And well, I appreciate that. And we, uh, we're having yeah. fun doing it and, uh, you know what? Yeah. I will keep going and we'll keep going and hopefully we will see you again for round number three someday, I hope, and, uh, <laughs> have you back on. And certainly I think we're going to, um, you know, we're going to dip down to, to lead son and, and do some work with, uh, some of the team there and have them on the, another podcast. Oh, definitely, well. Jeff. And yeah. thank you for uh, inviting me back on your show. Yeah. I really appreciate it. A lot of fun. Well, we appreciate it. Folks, uh, our call letters are uh, simplebiz360.com. You can see every episode from season one, two, three, four uh, on the YouTube experience on our website. Just go to our website, simplebiz360.com. Go to the podcast tab. Boom. It's going to be there. We're going to put this one on uh, Facebook, 28 audio channels. So it'll also be on their Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, you name it. Uh, it's going to be out there. And Gordon, we say thank you. Uh, don't freeze this winter and uh, hang in there. Be safe. And we will see you next time, sir. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks to you. Thanks to the listeners, too. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Take bye care. Now. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.